I'm going to talk about why Christians are fake. A couple of things that I have noticed that tend to be the reason why fake or hip- hypocritical Christians get developed as they've been spiritually formed as they've grown up either in the church or not. And I want to set the precedent that all of us are a little bit fake. All of us have areas in our hearts that are subconscious to use psychology language. We don't fully know the depth of our souls and we are blind to really what's going on. God in his great mercy still died for us. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished them but they do not know what they do we think oh i would never crucify jesus but we don't know we could be just like the pharisees all of us have a little pharisee inside of us that tries to keep us in line maybe a little centurion a taskmaster a soldier whatever and outside too so if you hear my neighbors that's what's happening the first thing that happens to develop hypocrisy in us in christians is to develop head knowledge over heart knowledge. It's where we've substituted information for transformation. We think that reading the Bible or reading another book or doing something like that where we're obtaining more knowledge in our head is going to actually lead us to deeper character when we haven't done the character work. Now, it's important to have theoretical knowledge of scripture, how God works and grows us. I'm all four books. If you've seen any of my other videos, I have tons of books that I love learning, sometimes too much, but that's also part of my personality. I like to learn. But when we rely on that and we don't actually do the deep inner work and feel with God, we don't understand what's going on in our hidden heart, the parts of our hearts that don't always align and believe in what God is saying or doing, or we don't want to, don't want to apply it, that's where we get into trouble and become hypocritical. Head knowledge could look like somebody who's a pastor who preaches, love your neighbor as yourself, can say it because they know the right theology and go, wow, he's really charismatic or he's really got it. But then he goes home and he treats his family poorly. Maybe he treats his family really well, but he's really rude to the server. Now, we all do things like that where we're kind in one situation and hurtful in the other, but that's the thing we have to become aware of and go, okay, what is happening in me that's causing me to hurt somebody? This is where I need God's love. And somebody who can become more fake is somebody who is disconnected with the the fact that their character is doing one thing and they believe and are, are speaking about doing another thing, but their actions are showing them actually who they really are. So the second thing they do is they focus on learning to be good rather than learning to be honest with God and letting God transform them. So moralism, so trying to do good and invalidating ourselves based on our own goodness. Like I did this and so therefore I'm justified. The Pharisees did this all the time. I think it was Luke 18 where the Pharisee was saying, thank God I'm not like a tax collector and thank God that I do all these things but Jesus said in comparison to the Pharisee that the tax collector who beat his breast and said woe woe to me have mercy on me God actually was more justified than the Pharisee I live in a city so there's like stuff going on so we hide that self that is actually really broken and we project it onto God or we try to present God a good front and we project that into other people. And this has been happening since the beginning of time. My video cut out, had to finish it inside, forgive me. It says this in Genesis 3, 8. It says, as they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So their reaction when God became present was for them to run and hide. They didn't say, I'm so grateful that God is here. He'll know exactly what to do. Instead, they tried to hide and cover. This is what humans have been doing since the beginning of time. And so we all do this. So hypocrisy is something that every single Christian has to come face to face with within themselves and so many of us would rather project their goodness onto god or in the world and not see the things inside that are truly painful and probably bring a lot of shame so that's why i have compassion for people who are really struggling and who just don't have a space to process what's going on in their heart I'm not saying that we need to not hold people accountable for what they do. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. 
But what I am talking about is how we can now be sober-minded and aware of how we might perpetuate hypocrisy. That to counteract that, we need to come out of hiding and we need to come boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, 16, to come to the throne of grace. So we don't want to be a Christian moralist. We don't want to think we have it all together or be put together on the outside. The third thing that happens to develop hypocrisy is that we think what we do and what we look like is really who we are. We don't actually have an identity shift where I talked about in the first part, which is we have more head knowledge versus heart knowledge and having that inner transformation happen. But this one is we try to emphasize what we look like on the outside and we don't deal with what's inside. So for example, our roles, our maybe job, we hear this question often, what do you do? What do you do for work? Now that's a fine question, but so many of us have our identities wrapped up in what do I do and who am I in relationship to other people? So for example, a mom might have her identity in being a mom. That's the most important thing about her. A pastor might have the being a pastor is the most important thing about them. I am not any of my roles and neither are you. And when we think we need to look good, like appearance wise on the outside, we're so worried about keeping up with the Joneses or all these external things that then we don't look at the heart. And Christ says it really doesn't matter like what those things are. Now it's fine to have external things. It's fine to have good roles or to be a CEO or have a job that makes you a lot of money, but that is not tied to your worth. That what you do and produce and what you look like is not tied to your worth. And when that's our emphasis on security is in those things, we can develop hypocrisy and we ignore the things that are lurking behind that are saying like, hey, Pay attention to me. Jesus says this in Matthew 23, 27 through 28. It says this. He's speaking to the Pharisees. He says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So the outside is tended to, but the inside isn't. And this will lead to hypocrisy in all of us. The fourth thing I wanna talk about is narcissism. That is something that's considered a mental health disorder or it's a really fixated, strong personality disorder. Now, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't wanna step into that land. There are cases where there is some extreme narcissism, especially in church power and leadership. And there's, I mean, there's narcissism everywhere in jobs and homes and everything. Are some pastors that are attracted to large congregations and mega churches because it feeds their hunger for power positions family member people that are narcissists that cannot empathize with how their actions impact other people now we all have a little narcissist in us but there are extreme cases and so those people need to have accountability they need to have training they need to have deep healing and i'm not talking to people who maybe are on that intense spectrum but that is something I just wanted to address, that narcissism could be something that's a deep mental health issue that comes from probably a lot of trauma. The fifth thing I wanna talk about is how we can be hypocritical. A sign is when we put religious activities over a relationship, over the things that really matter. So that might mean you put going to church or attending a Bible study over dealing with maybe your marriage or your kids or something else. I'm not talking about somebody who's going to church even though the relationship is rocky or things are happening and you're looking for wisdom and guidance and you're in process. I'm just talking about valuing it over maybe a relationship like your marriage. I have a friend who had a dad for a pastor and he would put more time, energy, and money into his congregation and the people he was leading than his own family. That's where you can develop hypocrisy or that is hypocritical because if you're not tending to your own immediate family and you're putting stock in other things or religious things, that's missing the whole heart of the gospel is to learn to love one another as you love yourself, to be the family of God. And it starts within your own home. If you're ignoring that, then that could be a sign that you're not dealing with something internally. Things can be so hard in families. And so I wanna empathize with you and not say, you just gotta figure it out. No, but that could be a sign. 
I was once at Christmas with a family who were Roman Catholic and they were going to a midnight mass. And one of the rules for taking Eucharist is not to eat an hour before Eucharist. They weren't sure if it was an hour before Eucharist or an hour before the actual service. So the service was at 10 and at 9.07, somebody grabbed a piece of peanut brittle and ate it. And three people jumped on this person who ate peanut brittle and was like, don't eat anything for you of the Eucharist. But they did it in such a way that was attacking, critical, and like he was in trouble. And that person, of course, got defensive and was like, no, it doesn't matter. They just started nitpicking this line in the sand. And I was like, does it even matter? Do you have to treat somebody so poorly and in your self-righteousness to to uphold this religious principle that you're not even sure is actually really real? Let me know in the comments if I, if I am what the specific rule is. But again, is the rule about caring for this other person or is this rule about this religiosity? You're valuing the rule over how you treat this person. That is where hypocrisy lies. And it's so subtle. And I think we should start noticing those moments of, hey, am I valuing being right or having this doctrine right versus hearing another person? I think that's why so many people have such a reaction to the church is because we don't listen. We don't pause and just try to be with somebody in their story and hear them. We try to tell them what they should believe. Jesus asked way more questions than he gave answers to. He listened to people. He was with people. He cared for them. And that doesn't mean he was watered down or didn't confront people or say this is what's true and isn't. No. If we look at the Gospels, he was very authoritative and he helped people transform. He didn't leave them as they are, but he didn't value religious practices over dealing with people and caring for their souls. There's nothing wrong with sacraments. It just means, do you put them ahead of other people? The sixth thing is that I find to lead to hypocrisy is we value one element or one spiritual discipline or practice over another. For example, Bible reading. I believe that can be sometimes a form of idolatry where you will read the Bible and get more head knowledge than actually open up to Jesus. We can tend to worship the means of God versus God himself. The Bible, I believe, is God's word to us, but we don't want to worship God's word. We want to worship him, and it's to lead us to that. Now, most Christians who are Bible-only Christians would say that, at the same time, it can develop a lot of hypocrisy when we don't look at the other areas of our life that God is trying to get us to pay attention to grow closer to him. It can lead to all types of just idol worship where we can worship maybe music, how we're worshiping God versus actually worshiping God. That sometimes we don't need fancy music or we don't need a powerful sermon, but we need to be in the presence of God. And that's where the inside of the cup gets clean and God transforms us. I think it can be easy to spew judgment on fake Christians when we have to own the hypocrisy within our own hearts. And we have to be committed to our own spiritual growth with the Lord and how he's cleaning us up from the inside out. He's already cleaned us up. We have been made clean by Christ and we have been made righteous. We have righteousness through him. And then we continue to grow and work out our salvation, as Paul says, with fear and trembling to let Christ transform us from the inside out. And he wants to have us be congruent, have integrity, that we are at home with our friends or our family is the same person we are in public, the same person we are at work. And we all are on different processes about that. And I know I have not figured it out. I am not like 100% me all the time. But that's the journey that I'm committed to. And I believe if more Christians committed to that inward journey that let go of the religiosity and really allow themselves to be transformed by the renewal of their mind and have Christ transform them, that we would have less and less Christians being hypocrites. And when we say, yes, I am a hypocrite, (laughs) that is me. Lord, help me. Help me to serve and worship you in truth. I believe we're going to see a lot more change in not only our churches, our families, and in our culture too. Let me know down below. I want this to be a free space for you to share what you think. At the same time, I really hope that you keep it kind and compassionate as well as being honest. I also have the free course on the rule of life. Don't forget to grab that below and email me if you have any questions or if you want a spiritual director to process what's going on in your life, or I can point you to some referrals as well.